A biological record is a burst of information about an encounter with a living organism and functions very much like a snapshot in time. My first ever biological record that I made was when I found a dead squirrel by the road. So a biological record isn't always a living organism. It can be a sign of an animal or even a deceased animal that you find by the road. It includes the following information, which we call the four W's. Number one, who saw the organism? And here it's useful to include some contact details in addition to your name, in case any scientists want to get in touch to ask more about your finding. Number two, where was the organism seen? A named location is best, complete with a postcode, or even better, a grid reference if you can find one. Number three, when was the organism seen? Include the date, which is the day, month, and year. It might also be useful to note the exact time, particularly if your record is of a creature that's known to operate during a certain part of the day, such as nocturnal wildlife, like bats. Finally, number four, what organism was seen? Probably the most important part of the record, if possible, try to include the scientific name, as common names can mean different things in different parts of the country. It's helpful if the record contains the highest resolution of information possible. This means the more detailed, the better. For instance, if you've submitted a record saying that John spotted a beetle in York in 2018, that's not going to be that useful. On the other hand, a higher resolution version of this record would be John Snow found a seven spot ladybird at St. Nick's Nature Reserve in York. Grid reference SE 616 on April the 24th, 2018 at 2 p.m. This is much more useful. When it comes to identifying the creature you've spotted, again, high resolution information is best. So if you know the exact species, that's great. However, only record the identification to a level you feel confident in, and then stop there. In the previous example, if John wasn't sure, it's better for him to send a record listing a ladybird, rather than trying to guess what type of ladybird it might be. Don't worry if you don't know what type of organism you saw. Ironically, the knowing part is the least important bit of the process, as long as you can describe that creature in as much detail as possible. The best way to do this is to take a photo, or better yet, multiple photos from different angles. But if you prefer a more old school approach, or your camera phone's not up to the task, a sketch or written account can be just as helpful. Experts, both local and online, will be able to then use this information to help identify the creature for you. And we'll talk more about this process in our next video. Every single biological record is useful. Uh, what I would say to people is just be honest about how confident you are in your uh, species identification and then you can find out from the person looking at that record whether they think it's valid or not. If it's not valid, what they'll actually do is reject the record and there's no problem with that. Finally, you might want to include some extra info. For instance, going back to Jon Snow and his ladybird, you could include how many ladybirds were present, the stage of their life cycle, the habitat where you found them, and even their behavior. All this, however, is optional. And as long as you cover the four Ws, who, where, when, and what, your record is complete. That was a brief introduction explaining what makes up a biological record. In our next video, we look at why biological records are important and who uses them. Thanks for watching.